appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 54. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. This H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 54. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, I'm Samaya. That's all you want to say, though? Yeah, I'm Samaya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Samaya. Neek, neek. Yep. Sound like him, first of all. Why they can sit on Twitter? All right, now let's get through the rundown. Shouts out to everybody that came out to the How to Hustle Live show. How to Hustle Live show was last week. It was a huge success. We was a couple of tickets shy of a sellout, but shouts out to everybody who bought a ticket, who showed up in the building. We're going to definitely be doing those probably quarterly, but we're definitely doing another one this year at some point. You stay tuned for the announcements. Make sure you're following all the pages, you know and you'll be able to get that information. Uh, Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World is my clothing line. As you can see, this is now we have T-shirts, Custom Hustle T-shirts, uh, baseball jerseys, jackets, and sweatsuits. Uh, H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. Follow that at Insta- on Instagram at H2H Cleaning. Also, my bad, too. Uh, Custom Hustle now has a Twitter page. It's Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Um, okay, we lost one of the stations. Shouts out to Dallas, Texas. The kickback went down, but you know what I'm saying? We got plenty of connections down there. We'll be able to make something else happen soon. Uh, every Monday, E Block Radio Network, two o'clock. Every Tuesday, GFT ne- Radio Network at two o'clock. Thursdays, WTNUPhilly.com, 12 30. Uh, Fridays, the I Say Podcast Radio Network at 10 a.m. and the THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. Okay, episode 54. Are you ready? Yep. What's the worst part of love? Oh, that's a big one. Um, my opinion, John, my opinion, the worst part of love is accepting my partner's um, changing state. So I can have three things. Can I say three things? Because I really feel like it's like, to me, it's Go ahead. Just, um, so me, it's like um, knowing when it's time to let go. Some, some of us don't know when it's time to let go. That could be like the hardest part in love, like whether it's letting go of something that we're holding on to, like of a pers- that person we thought, he, you know, your spouse was going to be or the way you thought your relationship was going to be and coming to realization that it's not what it is and you got to let it go. Um, and then it's accepting my partner's changing. Um, sometimes they change for the better. Sometimes they change for the worse. And you just got to like accept it. I, even though I don't think love should be hard, I think love should be easy, but I feel like everything has its challenges and challenges only makes things better. Like, you know, black diamonds, I always say, but that's that's my only personal thing about love. Realizing that that person ain't who you might thought, you know, they was and stuff. I don't know. Well, you got to realize that the person that you meet at, let's call it 25, ain't the same person at 45. Yeah, or so that's, that's the toughest thing so. about, yeah, but when you love a person, so my thing is like when you love them, right, you you love and you, you have it in your mind that this is, this is the love, like, this is how um, I, I, I think he's going to be, or you, you put a person up on a higher pedestal, and then you, you, after you start loving them and you realizing this ain't it, to me, that's like the hardest thing about your love, you gotta, you have to come down with them, you gotta bear all changes with them. Well, absolutely. Like, I mean, that's the thing about it is y'all got to be growing and evolving together. We got to be always moving towards the same thing. That's how you stay in love. That's how we keep the situation going is us always having those type of conversations. Us always uh, being in tune with what the other one is thinking and how the other one is feeling. That's why it's important for you to have conversations and not let feelings fester because uh, this is one of those things I always say like you, everything that you think shouldn't be said because what if you <laughs> what if you feel like yo we me and my wife had a baby and now this uh us having this baby was the worst thing that ever happened to our marriage oh yeah like I don't think you're a good dad like what if she thinks that I don't think you're a good protector and provider for us I don't right. think you're a good mom like I don't like the way that you handle my son or my daughter like those type of things is like landmines that will blow up your whole situation 
Now, just because you might feel like that at, let's just say, we feel like that in March, you might not feel like that in six months. You might not feel like that in a year. You might not feel like that in two years. But if you emotionally react off everything that you think, your relationship, I don't think it'll ever work because we both should be always changing, growing, and evolving. Like I said, uh, you can't be the same person that you was at 22 that you are at 32. Right. So that's what I said. Some some change for the good and some change for the bad. Like you might be this awesome person in the beginning, but as the years, you know, start to go on, you might start developing bad traits. So that's like loving a person through their bad times as well as their good times. All right. So that kind of leads me to where I was going to go with my answer. Uh, (laughs) My thing is the worst part is is the vulnerability is exposing yourself to all of those feelings and all of that that goes with that right because nobody wants to feel like they're gonna waste their time Mm -hmm. nobody wants to feel like it's seven years later and damn we're not gonna be together it's 25 years later and we're not gonna be together like we might have been perfect for each other if we was together from 15 to 22 we might have been perfect for each other at that stage but our problem is that we get in so many different relationships and you don't even be ready for these relationships. You don't mm. even know what you're looking for, what you want, how mm. you want to be treated, how you want to treat somebody else. Because yeah. like I said, you could have been 15 to 22, you in a relationship. Now, right. 22, you want to be wilding with your friends, whether that's a guy or a girl. So mm-hmm. now when you get in these different situations and it's like, you don't even know how to attack it. So now you three, four, five relationships deep and you got all these different situations that you damage from that you now bring into your new relationship and you blaming this man or blaming this woman for some shit they ain't right. nothing to do with. Right. So and you have to trust those... that it is love. So you have to you have to trust that what you're feeling is love. Because sometimes even, I don't, yeah. I don't feel like you gotta know you it. gotta know what it is. You gotta like you have to recognize it and know it and like really have a real conversation with yourself, really have a real conversation mm-hmm. with that person and recognize, is this just what I need right now? Or is this like something that's going to last long term? Right. That's why I said the problem that we be having in them situations is we don't be having them real conversations. We don't be even exposing ourselves to those real emotions because like I said, that's the worst part. The worst mm-hmm. part is exposing yourself to somebody and saying like, I'm all yours and you are all mine. And then you find out that she it's had allowed. a whole nother nigga on the side. Yeah. Right. He had a whole nother family. Like, that's yeah. the worst part, like finding out that you done wasted your time. Right. So that also goes with knowing when it's time to let go. Because some of us don't know when it's time to let go. Some people don't want to let go because they're just scared of scared of the unknown. Well, like, see, for you... me, myself, I'm not scared of the So I'm going to speak on myself. Me, myself, I'm not scared of the unknown. Being as though it takes me a long time to actually love someone, like even like someone, it takes me a long time to to like you let alone love you so once I finally do love you and stuff I'm the person that gives the gives the chances but I, I will leave you mentally before I leave you physically if you left mentally then you're already gone yeah so I will leave you mentally physically yeah, yeah physically, physically that's just we going through the motions like at that right. point that's how you got another I'm nigga here. You, you, like you at that point and all of that <laughs> Yeah, at that point you just there. Like, so that's what I say. It takes me, it is not, I'm not scared of the unknown uh per se. I'm just it just takes me a while. Like detachment has never been like my my strong suit. So it takes me a while to leave. Like I say, I will leave you mentally before I leave you physically. Like physically is the last thing, and then that's when I mean, I'm just like going. All right. See yeah. if you lost if you lost or have a person mentally, then that's half the battle. Like, yeah you going yeah because yeah like if you talking to somebody and y'all don't have a physical relationship and it's all mental mm-hmm. like if you fucking him or her mentally before you even have any type of sex or any intercourse with them then you won already yeah because that's gonna easily fall in line once you already got them that way like Mm-hmm. once mentally it's like we are on such a good level and things run so smooth with us and like it's just easy everybody wants love to be just easy and it's not right. easy this shit yeah. is hard it's hard it's an uphill battle yeah. and that's the part that nobody tells you about when these fairy tales when you was a kid and they always say and they lived happily, ever, happily after. ever after yes you know, nobody <laughs> living no happily ever after yes like i always use this as an example like my aunt and my uncle been together since 
I think they're like 15 or something, 13. They're in oh. their 70s now. Wow. I bounced things off my aunt and I bounced things off my uncle, but ultimately I have no idea what it took them for them to get 60 years down the line. Right. Like you will only know the surface level of somebody's relationship unless you know too damn much. And if you know too damn much, then you start forming your own opinions of what they think and how they should move in that situation, which always turns out bad, which is why you don't be sharing the information with people. All right. People always look to weaponize your problems against you and say, yo, you talking about that nut ass nigga who said this, that, or whatever? <laughs> right. Or the dumb ass bitch who did this, that, or whatever? That's why you don't right. let people in your business. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the wrong people anyway in your business. Well, I mean... I feel the like right sometimes people. it's good to have a, another person's um, input on something. Depends on depending on the situation, like because somebody looking out might can see things. Um, you know, somebody outside looking in can see might can see something that you're not seeing, or they might can be like the voice of reasoning because maybe y'all two clashing heads and y'all can't seem to get it, and this person like might can get it. FYI, you so you know. I like, mean, you copy might see it. like. <laughs> all right, see, you keep I stop personalizing your situations. I'm telling people all your business. This is international. No, no, I'm not telling people your business. I'm just saying, like, some, <laughs> that's what it is. That's not telling them my business. I don't care. But, but it's just simple fact that sometimes it, everybody always like, don't tell your business, keep your business in, keep your business in. But then that person might be internalizing their situation and then that could be doing damaging within themselves. Sometimes us women or men needs to get another opinion. It, it's sometimes it's good. That's my, that's just me. Right, you're internalizing your damage you're internalizing your pain right you're keeping all this stuff in you're keeping all this in you're holding it in because you don't want to tell people your business or you don't want to be this this and that but you're you're hurting yourself when though you can just go to a person if you trust a person and you can ask if this person is going to give you sound advice what's wrong with it you're not asking them like should i stay with this person or should i not stay with this person you're asking for sound advice I'm not, nah, see, you lost me there. Cause I'm not saying <laughs> never talk about anything ever with anybody. Like I just gave an example of my aunt and my uncle. I got several cousins, aunts, uncles, and people that I bounce things off of. It's just, it's a different way about going about it. Some people come and give you the full clip of this is exactly what he did, exactly what she did. Right. That's the route that I never try to go. I always would say, hey, how would you handle, give an example of a situation? not okay. this is what we had going on and this is what she said and this is how I felt you don't do all of that even in those situations like I said I'm going to these people who have been married these people that I'm talking to have been 20 years married 30 years married 40 years married like not my cousin who just got married two years ago and I know he doing this thing on the side or like none of those type of situations those be the problems that people will be going to you go to right. your single cousin who's never been in a sturdy relationship asking for relationship advice uh -huh. like yeah, that'd be the I, problem that'd be the yeah, shit that i'm yeah. talking about where yeah, they weaponize your shit my aunt or my uncle is not coming back around saying oh you're talking about the same like it ain't that type of situation right yeah I, I agree with that i agree with that yeah you only gave one one though what's, what's your other one I ain't got no other one. That's it right there to me is how many different vulnerability is. This is why men don't be in like, it'd be taking so long for a dude to really be in a relationship is because having to have yourself vulnerable to these different situations. Like I said, you then had a six year relationship with somebody and it didn't work out. And it was like, damn, I really cared and loved her and all of that. And then to find out at the end of the day, it just didn't work. Mm. So like, how hard is it going to be for me to now do that again? Mm. Now he was in another relationship that was two years or three years and it's like yo here we go again so now that's why i said you get to the fifth sixth seventh person and it's like i got so much damage and so much uh just raw emotion tied up into all of my feelings and all of that about two three girls ago that you never dealt with or two three guys ago that you never dealt with so now you're in a situation where you questioning the whole damn thing you get in a relationship or in a marriage and you like well, is this going to work out? If it don't work, I'm going to do this, that, or whatever. So it's like you constantly fighting yourself with all of those emotions to the point where when now you got somebody else depending on you, or you got two, three, four, five kids depending on you, like right. it turns into a whole situation where this is why people be like mentally shot with these situations is because one, you never healed from the old situation. Two, you never even really knew what you was looking for. 
this person might have been somebody that was just here for the moment, but you try to square peg round hold it because my last two cousins got married, my brother got married, my sister got married, like right. everybody else got somebody to go that's with, like so. Yeah, just the half the person. Yeah, that's why it's, it could be a snowball effect so fast that you don't even recognize it. That it's been ten years of the same BS, and you just oh well, she's cute and. and Mm. I don't know. We both like love and hip hop, so you know it we working. Can get married. It's working. Yeah, it's working yeah. to an extent. But like I said, it's never be nobody ever has that happily ever after because happily ever after ain't really a thing. I don't you don't believe it's a thing? Like what if the happy ever ever can happen? Like just because you might have your trials in your relationship, but what if it what if it is possible? Like you can still be happy. Have your happily ever after. I don't like, what does it consist of? That should be a good topic too. Like, like, what does it consist of? Like, what do you think a happily ever after is? Copy that. To stay tuned to the Hot Hustle podcast. We, we <laughs> Period. <laughs> um, this is why I said I don't think it is because when you love somebody, you expose yourself to so many different things, like a bunch of stuff that you just don't even want to do, but you do right. it because you love the other person. Mm-hmm. So for some people... If you're the type of person that looks to please other people, you can go on for the rest of your life just looking to please whoever your spouse yeah, is. Office, right. And you pleasing them pleases you type of thing. Mm-hmm. Where you have a more of a selfish individual who, like, I'm only going to put up this with this for so long. I'm only going to do X amount of a job. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really looking to do all of these things that I don't want to do. How many times you end up at the mall and you don't want to be there? You end up at a party and you don't want to be there. You don't know none of these people. She works with this this girl. You met her dude once or twice. You don't even really like ball. Right. But you're trying to keep the peace in your situation. Vice versa for a girl. You got it. You had a Super Bowl party. You don't even care about the game. After Mary J got off stage, you was ready to go home. But you know your dude had too much to drink and you know he wanted to stay. So like. Yeah, but I think it's more so like of a if you find that that perfect balance, that person like if y'all can do like that and it's perfect, you ain't gonna never find a perfect balance. I don't believe you don't think it's a perfect balance. I think it's you sometimes nothing is perfect. So you don't have a perfect balance. Yeah, but I mean, like it's it's always gonna be a selfish person in a relationship. I understand that, but it's like, what if you can find that perfect balance, like a give and a take. I mean, I don't think you can. I don't. I, I'm not gonna say. I don't, I'm not gonna. Excuse me. I'm not gonna say that you can't find a balance in your relationship. Right. right. What I'm saying is, it's very rare. Because if, right. yeah. if you have two people, even if you have two people who are like uh, two givers, two if you givers. If you have two givers, if you have two givers, though, then nobody's looking to like nobody's getting the joy of receiving. Receiving. Uh-huh. Yeah, we both trying to drop these dimes and nobody's trying to lay the ball up so we can score these points. That's right. We just, we just both giving out no great no look passes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Somebody eventually, like, like, that's why I said, like, it's a very rare situation that I believe, but I don't think, like, happily ever after type. Ooh, that's a rough one. That's why it's a fairy tale. Well, that's, like, why, I, that's why I said, what does your happily ever consist of? Because some, and that's some... why I said, we'll stay tuned to episode <laughs> in the 60s. We will make that one happen. We'll make that one happen because I definitely yeah. would like to know, like, what is, like, what, what is that? Because some people happily ever after is different from yours. So everybody's you know? is copy. So, everybody's yeah. interpretations and all of that is different because happiness and success. And we did that before. Shout out to Sam and Sai. I'm sipping with Sammy. We did that before. Where like it's a relative statement for some right. people. Like uh, a two bedroom apartment is all I ever need. Right. Some people a one bed a one bedroom co- so a one bedroom condo might be all some guy ever needs because he don't got no kids and no wife. Right. Uh, the person like I'm saying it's a relative thing because everybody looks at different things as success. Mm-hmm. Somebody got three kids can't have a one bedroom. Like this is a That's failure right. for them because That's like right. we got more than you know what I'm saying than that holes. Mm-hmm. So it's a relative statement that everybody's going to have their own interpretation and their own uh, they own answer outlook on that situation because everybody needs different things. Like that's another one of those things where you get these different situations and relationships where it's like you can't love girl A the same way you love girl B. Absolutely because not because they both different. That's what I'm saying. Girl A might have had a rough upbringing and got trust issues, and girl B might have been spoiled and like yeah. see, her expectations are different, but. If right. you just, this is how I am and this is how the game go, then you don't have a problem. Mm-hmm. 
not even that uh you might meet a person that knows what they want you know headstrong coming at you headstrong that's gonna make you change maybe make you change your outlook on things so i think that might be a good one a good one for them i've never been never been attracted to those headstrong (laughs) (laughs) never liked them headstrong okay Headstrong ones are good. Shout out to the headstrong woman because they wow, are. Yeah, I've never good. been a fan of the they headstrong. They're definitely good. You know what you want. You coming in strong. No BS. No nothing. I ain't talking about Copy. the boozy ones. I'm talking about they the make great ones. friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they make great friends. They make great homies. You know what I'm saying? No, they make great wives. That's what they make. Great wives. Great business Copy. owners. Yes. Copy. I'm, I'm saying if that's what you're looking for, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we looking for bosses. That's what that's what they looking for. That's what my you cousin, know. man. I ain't gonna expose him. Shout out to my cousin. He told me, man, I like a little neck action. <laughs> I like a very stiff neck. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm saying I like a little problems between L3 and L4. I don't like none of that. <laughs> Listen. Um, but all right, before we wrap this episode up, uh, episode 54, this one is, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh your business. My business, uh Sumi's yeah, Creation. Yes, it's Sumi's Creations. I do all created events, uh, baby showers, wedding, romantic picnics. I do birthday parties. You name it, I'm there. Um, all you got to do is give me a theme, a color, or whatever it is. If you don't know, just let me do my thing. And yep, I'm there. I got you. What made you want to go into the uh, romantic design or uh, uh, romantic. festive party? Are you a, you a romantic? Is that what it is? I am a romantic. I love love, um, but I, love um, love. I like I like creating things. Like I can take a small space. It started from my house, you know, decorating homes and stuff. And then my sisters and you know always wanted me to do their parties or they baby parties. So it started off like that. And the more I learned, the more I got into it. So I started, you know, started like that. And then it just came into a business people used to just write me on Facebook like can you do my party or stuff like that and then it just you know it just came about I started getting feedback like you should really make a business out of this and then I just went out on a limb and made a business out of it alhamdulillah copy that um all right so let the people know where they can follow the business at how can they get some jobs booked and you know saying get in contact with you and all of that uh, they can follow me on Facebook at Samaya Wood, Instagram at Sumi Umi, uh, Sumi underscore Umi of three. They can follow me there. Yes. All right, copy that. Shouts out to my sister for coming on the episode 54. She's Thank locked in every me. week. Yes. She's locked in every week. And that's why we had her on this one. I appreciate <laughs> the love. And Thank again, you. shouts out to everybody who showed up to the How to Hustle live show. I really appreciate it. That's episode 54. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.